So we're talking about this, but the word role-playing game covers so many different things that we really need to define the term. Because if we don't define the term, it's really easy for us to get way off track in our discussion. But even further, we keep using that word game. <laughs> I figured Princess Bride would go well over here. We don't even have a good definition of the word game. I mean, patty cake's a game. Yeah, what kind of game is patty cake, though? I mean, is there a winner? Is there a loser? Can you mess up? And... When one plays patty cake, everyone loses. <laughs> or is it Roger Rabbit patty cake? I mean, poker's covered in that. We, gave, we were talking at a convention called MAGFest in the US, and a woman in the audience took umbrage with the fact that we wanted to define the term game for the purpose of discussion because, and I quote, I watch movies with my friends, and we consider that a game. If you look at the dictionary, that could definitely be a game. It's like an amusement or whatever, right? Candyland, I mean, you think Candyland's obviously a game, but in Candyland, no one makes any decisions. All you do is reveal cards and move the thing, determining, you know, based on what the cards say. No one decides anything. There's no decision or anything. It's, it's just play it out and see who wins. You could just flip over the whole deck of cards and be like, Grim wins. Now, too many people, when they want to, as soon as someone starts trying to define, well, I'm going to make a definition of game, they start using that to exclude other kinds of games or somehow denigrate those other kinds yeah, of games. Like, usually, oh, you're not a gamer. Yeah, usually they're trying to make a no true Scotsman argument. Like, you know, people will be like, oh, that's not a sport. That is a sport. And what they're trying to say is, I respect that activity. I do not respect that activity. Right? Oh, I respect that as a game. Yeah, that's I like that one. I don't like that. I don't want to call that a game because then it's you know we're not trying to do that, right? You know, all of these various activities are even you know watching movies we don't consider to be a game. That doesn't mean we don't think watching movies is a good way to spend your time, right? We're just trying to have a discussion about a particular subset of things that many people call games. So we need some sort of word to narrow it in so there's no confusion that we're actually talking about something else. Now the trouble really is the word game. It's an ancient word. It's been used for a long time to cover a lot of different things. I mean, if I hunt pheasants, pheasants, that is also game. So Richard Garfield, you may have heard of him. He, you know, Magic the Gathering, Android Netrunner, kind of a famous dude in game design. He coined a term, and that term is orthogame. The book in which he coined this term is a, what's the, uh, Characteristics, Characteristics of games. games. That book is like our Bible, basically. If any of you are aspiring game designers, go buy Richard Garfield's book, Characteristics of Games, and read it cover to cover. It, it looks like a boring textbook, but it's actually the best book. Now, he covers ortho games exclusively. The definitions of games we use, we really use three definitions. An interactive amusement, a series of interesting decisions, or a competitive test of skill. And he decided to make a new word for that. An ortho game is a competition between two or more players using a set of rules and a method of ranking. Poker, chess, football. Suddenly we have a word, and now we know that Pluto is not a game in this context. Right, Candyland is not a game. Patty Cake is not a game if we're going by ortho game, and we just don't want to say ortho game every time because it's annoying. So he coined this term, and it's a very useful term, but his book very pointedly only covers these kinds of games. It doesn't cover role-playing games. So we needed a word for these other kinds of games. So we want to commit a little bit of hubris, and we've tried to coin a term, ideal game. So if an ortho game is defined by this, he chose ortho because ortho is the prefix for sort of straight. Uh, he uses it to mean a straight or pure or true game. And ideo means unique or personal. So a series of interesting decisions that produce a personal outcome. Dungeons and Dragons does that. Uh, Mass Effect does that to a degree. In fact, notice some of these games recently, people play them for the story, and then they even let you turn off the game part because the choose-your-own-adventure story is all anyone actually cares about. Yeah, but Final Fantasy wouldn't really work up to this, right? Sure, you might make some interesting decisions, but it's not a personal outcome, right? Final Fantasy VII ends the same way for everyone in this room. There's no personal about it whatsoever, right? You might have a personal reaction to it, but that can be said for anything. Yeah, so it doesn't really count. So the kinds of games we're talking about for the rest of this lecture are ideal games, but even that is just a high-level category. So I'm going to answer the next question for you, and then we're going to proceed. Conflict. Conflict is the answer to the next two questions. What makes a good story? Star Wars seems to be the theme in every PAX keynote ever, so I figured we'd go along with that. I assumed, and it would be. Yeah. So the whole point of a story like Star Wars is that there is conflict between these characters. That is why we watch it. We're not interested as much in the conflict between us and George Lucas. Some of you might be, but not everybody. You know, the conflicts are internal, they're external. It's like basic literature one-on-one action here, right? What drives a good game? Also conflict. conflict. 
but it is conflict between the player and the game, or the player and another player. Nobody goes home or goes to their friends and tells about the story of how Billy and Jimmy saved that stupid girlfriend from those whatever. No one tells that story. The story is, yo, Scott, I beat Double Dragon last Holy night. Holy shit, what happens at the end? Uh, you get credits, and that's it. <laughs> I beat Double Dragon. You know Luke what? beat the Emperor. Spoilers. I beat Double Dragon. <laughs> All right? You see how the conflict, right, in a sort of an ortho game, like Double Dragon, which isn't even really an ortho game because it's not between two players, right? But it's still, you know, more of a game, not too much role-playing, is all about you in the real world, right? You beating this thing. I got the high score at Space Invaders, right? I beat Rim at a game of Puerto Rico. I beat Rim at Magic the Gathering, right? But when you play D&D, it's my character went and rescued the whatever, right? Suddenly you're inside the story is the things that matter, right? That personal outcome. Yeah, you don't win Dungeons and Dragons, at least in the sense of an ortho game. You want to find the conflict in the fantasy, not the conflict of you trying to conquer, you know, and improve your skills. So if we boil all this down and take all these concepts together, this is our proposed definition of a role-playing game that we will use for the rest of this panel. Because really, why do we play role-playing games? Because we're trying to tell cool stories. But simultaneously, we're not good storytellers, and with all of that combined, we're also gamers, and we want to play a game. So a role-playing game is nothing more than a mechanism of conflict resolution in order to facilitate collaborative storytelling. Right, I mean, anyone can just sit down and tell a story. It's pretty easy, even if you're bad at it, right? And good writers can tell stories, because that's what they're good at, right? But me and Ram, we're computer people. We can't really I can't tell, tell a story. stories really well at all, right? But maybe if we get together, we can have a lot of fun coming up with a story together. Maybe someone's a good writer, maybe no one is, but it's, it's a good time, right? It's like, okay, you know, I want the guy to go and kill the dragon. That would be so awesome. So keep this definition in your head for the whole rest of this. This is how we're defining the term role-playing game, because that is what we're talking about. We're not talking about Final Fantasy. And I just want to point out, yes, I did Photoshop my friends from the D&D group onto that Star Wars picture. <laughs>